Candy Spugs Art Journal, July 13th, 2024. This is my second entry, and as promised, the major villains in my work in progress Threats and Petals Rebellion. I'll also be upfront since I forgot to mention that I use a machine generated voice to read the first journal entry. I misplaced my marker phone and I found it hiding in my backpack for some reason. I'm of the narrative thought process that the antagonist in a story should in some way be connected to the protagonist either thematically and or personally. This is just a way of me saying my protagonist and antagonist are designed to at least have, hopefully, some interesting and thoughtful interactions in the story. Let's start with the fallen savior Empress Shayu, who's 5 feet 2 inches or 157.5 centimeters tall though she would prefer to be called the Moonlight Empress. Sha Yu was chosen by the entity that protects the island known as Murin to be blessed with the mastery over the elements of fire, water, frost, earth, wind, and lightning during an invasion by an ancient empire. However, war gave Sha Yu post-traumatic stress disorder, which led her to isolating herself from all her support networks. Then she began to resent all her friends and family for not being able to see how much internal suffering she was going through. This led Shayu to portray the Ken Council, the proto-representative democracy that formed the government on the island. The Soul Breaker Emperor Wu Yang could read her mind, see her feelings without the need of her to communicate it, and his found family, the inner court, who will always fulfill any wants she desires. She still believes herself as the hero of her homeland and is genuinely confused to why people outside the palace despise her and her family. Fallen Savior Shayu is based on how certain main characters are written to always be right, worshipped by all the good side characters, never learn how to communicate, and dismiss other people's feelings, and chosen to have all the powers in the story while still being the underdog. Fallen Savior Empress Shayu is visually inspired by the generic looking dating game heroines, who are usually not allowed to have either much personality in their writing or in their appearance, so they can become as many people's self-insert as possible. Otherwise, nothing about her stands out, other than the fact she is responsible for the deaths of many people and over her 100 years long rule over the island. Now she occupies the role of both the victim who is being exploited by Wu Yang and a victimizer who actively helps commit mass murders and an ongoing genocide burning willingly and enthusiastically. Soulbreaker Emperor Wu Yang, called the Sun Shadow Emperor by his allies, is who I jokingly say is a man who fakes a found family by having a found hostage situation. He is like a vampire, as he is immortal so long he drains the life of other people. He can also turn his others into a half-dead being by killing them and resurrecting them through a profane ritual. However, the person will forever be bound to Wu Yang's will and his life, since if he dies, everyone he resurrected dies with him. Wu Yang has gone through many hardships, but similarly to what Shayu is now, he only cares for his problems while also believing he is doing good. He loves the inner court and Shayu, but he is of the mind only he knows how to love and protect them in the correct and proper way. For example, when Shayu was pregnant and it turned out there may be a complications that endanger her if she birthed it normally, Wu Yang made sure no one around her would tell her of the danger, and it led to Shayu having long-term chronic pain. Luckily for him, Shayu cannot disobey or leave him since her resurrection. He is inspired by certain shadow power love interests who are supposed to be charming, morally flexible, and sometimes terrible, but always morally right and all faults are excused by his dramatic past and sexiness. For Wu Yang, anything that is good for him is always good for everyone else, except the bad people who all happen to be his enemies. Wu Yang's most dangerous ability is to read the emotions of others, and if he puts effort into it, see the memories and desires of his unfortunate victim. 
This is how he maintains control over Shayu and the inner court, as he can stamp out any budding doubt or dissent among them. He fears his found family betraying or leaving him, as they know his weaknesses better than anyone. His greatest strength is his ability to charm others into his cause, but he is very overconfident that he will never lose, as he has sealed away Miram to prevent the creation of another chosen one. I will also use this time to clarify and explain more about the protagonists, Neopach and Tialon, and the starting point they will be at in the story. For Neopach, as I said before, has a flat arc. She is very assured about who she is despite her mutinous scars and living under a government that demands she just die without resisting. She is very determined to kill the Imperial rulers and restore the Kin Council government. Neopodge's story is one of many of how the Imperial government creates hundreds of orphans by killing their parents and how a sizable portion of those orphans join the, re the rebel and resistant groups. Neopodge's family was already part of the resistance, but she is the sole survivor of her family. She is very earnest about her feelings when she isn't on the job as the Bloodweaver, her rebel assassin alias. Neopodge has been selected by Mirren's spouse, the dream maker Caleb, to find the new chosen one and reassemble an ancient artifact known as the Cosmic Crown to kill the Imperial rulers and set Mirren free from their prison. She knows the reason why she shares a dream connection with Tialong and it's to use that information to find him and help him fulfill the will of Caleb, no matter what it causes her personally. Tialon's story is one where the Imperial government kidnaps and enslaves the children of influential and powerful families deemed criminal, to hold them either hostage or to serve a punishment. His father was killed and his mother taken to a prison camp when he was 13 years old. Tilon has much more insecurities from being multi-gendered, but now he lives in a more cruel environment that mocks him for this. This is also on top of the fact he's attracted to men and maybe other people too. Ever since he rose up the ranks of becoming an Imperial Agent, the Death Blossom, Rather than a servant slave, he has been using his powers to get revenge. Tilon formed a genuine friendship with the first prince and son of Wu Yang in Shayu, Zengian, and is also in love with Zengian. This is all the while knowing he plans on destroying Zengian's life to avenge his family. Tilon is a person full of many complexes, preparing to break his heart and soul to enact a revenge plan he's been planning for a decade. He is unsure of what it means to have dreams with this random person who seems to see him in a way that unnerves him. I also modified the way the dream communication works to be more direct in that if both Neopodge and Tilon are sleeping at the same time, they can interact with each other in the dream realm similarly like they do in the waking world. However, Tia Long refuses to communicate with Neopodge, thinking this person is just a dream stalker of some sort. Hopefully this makes it more easier to implement in the story as the outline I have so far have neither of them knowing of each other's personal or professional life. That's all I have for this one. I'll discuss the general lore of Threads and Petal Rebellion in the next entry. See you next time. Bye!